Not really gonna do anything, just wait. Got my hand up here. Now I'm gonna guide the bit towards his lips. Probably the most dangerous thing you can do with a horse the first time they're saddled is stay in there with them. I've been doing a good bit of work to help fan him with his manners. That's what we've been working on the last few days. And today I am going to saddle him up for the first time and we'll see how that goes. I'm gonna move him around a little bit, get his mind on me. He has, for the most part, gotten to where he works pretty good. On a line, he's gonna be a little bit distracted today. Two eyes and turn. He has wanted to come into my space from the very beginning, push into my space, try to make me move. So, I give him a chance to give me the right answer to not come into my space. And when he does, I'm pretty hard on him because he knows now. He knows what he should be doing, what he shouldn't be doing. He shouldn't get in a situation where he could get me hurt. Right there, he looked away, so I just told him to go forward. So... I'm going to be a little bit more demanding of his attention. I'm going to expect a little bit more of him. Right here, what I'm after here isn't so much to get him tired. I'm after his attention, like that right there. He keeps looking over at the camera. Looking away from me, so every time he looks away... I'm either going to pull his head to me or I'm going to tell him to go forward or I might do both. Give him something to do. If he doesn't respect me enough to give me his attention, then I've got a problem. This is what I've been spending a lot of time working on. He's got to respect my authority. And something just as simple as looking away is a big deal. See, now you notice instead of just going around like I'm asking him to do, He's trying to overreact. He's trying to say, no, can I not go there? And then when I send him, he tries to overreact. He's trying to try different answers so that he doesn't have to do what I'm asking him to do. And what I'm going to do, this still needs to get a lot better, but what I'm going to do to encourage him to want to look to me for the answer is to put more pressure on him. He knows what he's supposed to do. He just doesn't see any reason why he should do it. So by putting more pressure on him, I'm going to give him a reason. Kind of put him in a bind, let him decide to let me help him out. And then that will encourage a couple of things. A lot of people talk about, well, how do I how do I bond with my horse? I'm having a hard time bonding with my horse. Well, the best bond you can have is when the horse wants you and wants your leadership. So if I get him in a bind with saddle where he's not sure what he's supposed to do, then that's going to go a long ways towards him respecting my authority and towards us getting a better relationship because right now as you see our relationship ain't that good he's wanting to be in charge i'm making him work and if you just keep going with that it's going to be a downhill spiral you can't just keep working the horse harder and expecting different results so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna change the work to him he was creeping to me and all i did was pick the whip up so that I'd have a demand to get him to back up and he backed out of my space. That tells you he knows what I'm asking for 
It's his desire to give it to me is where the issue is. So by putting more pressure on him, which saddling is what we're going to do to put more pressure on him to advance his training, that's going to help that desire to him want to. Let's go over here. Green horses, you're... If you've watched me work green horses before, I always bridle first. So that's what I'm going to do with him. I'm going to put the bridle on him first. As far as I know, this will be the first time he's ever had a bit in his mouth. With the work that we've done before, I have some tools to work with for when he comes into my space. I might need to use those. We'll see. Let's see if I can get him turned around so you can see how this goes a little better. I want to work this on the lunge line so that I have a little more line to work with. He's wanting the rub there. So he's getting his head up. I'm just going to wait. Not really going to do anything. Just wait. Got my hand up here. Now I'm going to guide the bit towards his lips. So we got an issue there. Let's try this again. So he had an issue when I went to put the bit in his mouth. Let's soften his mouth a little bit. Gonna rub it a little bit. Get him open his mouth, get him chewing, rub his nose. Now let's try this again. He acts like Somebody has done this before and kind of forced it. So now I'm holding top of the bridle. It's between his gums, between his lips. But I'm not really forcing it. I'm just letting it sit there. Now he actually opened his teeth to let it go between his teeth. And he took the bit in all on his own that time. Huge difference. I changed how I did it a little bit. Got a huge different reaction. Now let's go over and we're going to fix this earpiece. It's sitting a little bit low in his mouth. His mouth is built pretty typical. It's a little narrow. He's an Arabian, so he has a little bit of a narrow mouth, but his bars line up pretty good with the corners of his mouth. I've talked about that with a couple of other horses that I started where the bars didn't really line up with the corners. His is pretty good. I'm not gonna do anything today actually working on the bit. I just want him carrying the bit. I don't want any wrinkles in his mouth. I want him to get used to it being there. I, wrinkles will create tension. I want him to be able to move it around and be a little bit loose. And let him just, just start wearing it to get used to it. It's probably just a little lower than what I would like it to be. I might raise it in a minute. We'll see. I'd rather it be just a little lower than a little bit higher. So let's go grab the saddle pad. Now in this whole process, oh, back up, back up. I'm not gonna let him push through my space. I'm also not gonna stand right in front of him. Back up, back up, there you go. Good boy. Going forward when I picked this up was the wrong reaction. I bumped him, I just bumped the halter. It's not connected to the bridle in any way. Now you see, he was really not scared of anything when I picked this up. This was his reaction, his desire to not do what was being asked of. You need to be able to recognize the difference between scared and don't want to. When I picked this up, he jumped forward. That'd be real easy to interpret as scared of the saddle blanket. I knew he wasn't scared of it because of the work that I've done with him already. That was don't want to. Don't want to is going to be addressed and handled way different than scared. Don't want to. I bumped on him and sent him back. Scared, I would have backed up and broke it down into several steps. See, now he's not even worried about it enough to even be paying attention. 
tells me he needs more pressure put on him. More pressure. He has tried to bite me a couple times, so I'm going to be real aware of his mouth. I wouldn't be surprised if when he gets tired of what I'm doing back here, he tries to get me to stop by trying to bite me. And I'm not, at this point, I'm not going to do a whole lot toward, about the biting. I'm focused on here. When I address the biting, I'm going to address the biting by having to move his feet. Right now, I want his feet still, so my correction is different. If I address the biting by moving his feet now, then I'm, not, I'm going to be counterproductive with the blanket. I choose what I'm working on. Let's walk back forward. The owner told me that he's never had a pad or a saddle on him before, so this is the first time he's ever had a saddle pad on him. So now, he's okay with that. Okay enough that he's looking around, not paying attention. I'm going to go to the saddle. More pressure. Everything about this, what this horse is doing tells me this horse needs more pressure put on him. So that's what I'm doing. Now at this point, I just want to set the saddle up there and have it be a good experience. Let it be up there. Him be, see it up there, be okay with it. That's why I don't have the saddle pad. I'm not going to cinch it down yet. I just want it up there and take it away. Add pressure, release pressure. I added pressure, his feet stood still, took the pressure away. Let's do it again. I'm going to drop the stirrup on this side this time. Let it bounce around a little bit. Good boy. I get a lot of comments about saddles on Arabians and the saddle not fitting the Arabians. Because of the Arabians have a shorter back. Arabians do have a shorter back. But what a lot of people are looking at as poor fit is not poor fit. What a lot of people are looking at is this coming back to the point of the hip. And it looks like it's at the point of the hip. And right now it is at the point of the hip. But when I put the saddle on, the saddle is actually outside of that point of the hip. Pull it back off. Now let's put the pad on. I typically, first time I saddle a young horse, I saddle him from the right. Because that way I only have to walk around him once. As long as I have the girth adjusted good. Pull my slack over here. Rub him under the belly. The girth is gonna go and I don't want to surprise him. I have to go up on my girth on this side. So much for my walking around him once. Hopefully I'll remember next time. As you see, he's still not really paying a whole lot of attention to me. 
he's looking around. He's not worried about the saddle. When this saddle gets ready to put more pressure on him, get a little snugger, he'll probably get his attention back. That's what I'm looking for. I need his attention on me. If you remember when I was working with Saber and he had his, had his attention on the outside, I put stuff in the arena to get his attention in. I've done that with him and he just runs over whatever's in here. It really don't, he don't look at it. Okay, so it's far from tight enough to stay on if I turn him loose, but I do have it buckled in a hole. I don't tie the Texas T knot in my Western saddles. I always buckle them in a hole. Notice I'm wiggling a little bit. I want him to know it's up there. His ear, see his ears come back? Now I ain't starting to pay attention. Now when I get ready to snug it on down, see if I can get one more hole. Now I think it's tight enough. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn him loose, leave him dragging this lunge line. If you remember, he ground tied with it before. And we're gonna see what he does. I'm gonna to go to that corner over there so I can get up on the wall. So if he runs at me to hit for help, I can get out of his way. Probably the most dangerous thing you can do with a horse the first time they're saddled is stay in there with them. I'm gonna let him work it out and we're gonna see what happens. See him look at coming back to me? Give him a minute to think about it. I wanna be, I'm gonna really watch him because if he bucks, he's most likely gonna to come to me. So I don't want to be right in front of him. I'd rather be off to the side because he's less likely to buck sideways. Get this whip so in case he does come at me, I can send him away. Now let's see if we can move his feet. Just walking is fine. Notice I got him out a little longer now. I like him to move, work through it. I don't always stay in here and work them on a line when they're first saddled. Actually, I very seldom do. Usually if it's a quarter horse, I'm gonna turn them loose and I'm gonna go get across the fence and let him figure it out. Him, I don't want him to just start running and bucking. I really want him to think. Think about what's happening and work through it. Now you see how he's wanting to bring his attention back to me a lot better than before. This is what I'm looking for. I get a lot of questions about when should you start a horse? And he is a really good example of when they need to be challenged. This horse was obviously in a point where he needed to be challenged mentally and that's where we're at now. Let's ask him to change directions. I'll use the wall. I thought he might do it out there on his own but he didn't. This way. Change directions again. There we go. Really want to encourage his brain to think. This is the first time that he's ever had a saddle on his back. His owner told me that he's never been saddled. See him push into the pressure. Let's meet him at the wall. Oh, he beat me to it. We'll go around and we'll do it again.
See how he, he keeps putting me on his left. He'd rather me be on his left. He's more comfortable with me there. So we need to do more work on it. See him change direction. Put me on his left again. There. I want to keep putting me on his right. That's going to be important as we progress. Back on the right, move forward. Saddle is probably not tight enough to get on and ride, but it's tight enough it's not going to fall off. Nope, change directions again. Let's change back. He uses his body really well. Okay, so I'm going to offer him a chair. He's looking out at the camera again already. He's already okay with this challenge. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to check the saddle and make sure it's still tight enough. It's not going to come off. Make sure he hadn't let out a bunch of air. So good. And I'm just going to leave him standing in here for a little while and go work another horse or two. We'll make another video or two. And then, uh, depending on, I'm going to keep an eye on him, and depending on how he does, we might come in and start ground driving him. And uh, if I don't do that today, then we'll do that tomorrow. So, this is uh, Phantom. I'll put a link up here to his playlist on YouTube. Until next time, thank you for watching.